We got an easy one here. The quick one we're going to knock out before the end. Uh, we're going to solve, uh, we're going to create peace in the Middle East. Ah, uh, here's a post by Reddit user, uh, ISA, oh my God, ISAWAS, uh, IN. Is a was in. Whatever. Here we go. This here. This is a, uh, a map of destruction in Gaza since October 7th. And population density in Gaza 2020. Do you notice where they line up? Let's, let's overlap that. It's almost identical. Is the suggestion that every, every single person in Gaza was Hamas? No, of course not. No, this is genocide. And this is not the first time that Israeli actions have been called genocide. The Guardian was wise enough to allow uh, recently uh, let go MSNBC journalist Mehdi Hassan write for them. As always, Mehdi Hassan knocked it out of the damn park. Here's the story. Picture the scene. An Israeli prime minister launches airstrikes on an Arab population. Civilians are killed in their thousands. An American president, stunned and shocked by the scenes of carnage on his TV screen, makes a call to his Israeli counterpart, and within minutes, the bombing is over. Sound crazy or maybe simplistic, maybe naive even? Yet, the year was 1982. What was supposed to have been a limited incursion into southern Lebanon by the Israeli military over the summer under the leadership of Ariel Sharon then Defense Minister, remember him? No. Morphed into a months-long siege of Beirut and an all-out assault on the Palestine Liberation Organization, PLO. Between June and August, the Israelis cut off food, water, and power to the Lebanese capital in a brutal att attempt to destroy the PLO, whose fighters were holed up inside a tunnel network below Beirut. Sound familiar? Yes. On 12 August, in what would later be dubbed Black Thursday, Israeli jets bombed Beirut for 11 consecutive hours, killing more than 100 people. That same day, a horrified Ronald Reagan placed a phone call to Medichem, oh my God, Medichem uh, Begin. I know that's not how you say his name, but that's how I am going to say his name because I am a little dumb. Then Israeli Prime Minister to express his outrage and condemn the needless destruction of bloodshed. Uh, bloodshed. Menachem, this is a holocaust, Ray, <laughs> Reagan told Begin. I shouldn't laugh at that. It's just, we refuse to learn anything. Menachem, this is a holocaust, Reagan told the prime minister. Yes, an American leader used the H word in conversation with an Israeli leader. Uh, Begin responded with sarcasm, telling the U.S. president that I think I would know what a holocaust is. Reagan, however, didn't budge insisting on the imperative for a ceasefire in Beirut. 20 minutes. That's all the time it took for the prime minister to call back and tell the president he had ordered Sharon to stop the bombing. It was over. I didn't know I had that kind of power, a surprised Reagan told an aide upon putting down the phone. Flash forward 42 years. And the, uh, the Israeli assault on Gaza has now gone on for twice as long as the siege of Beirut. In 1982, Reagan was said to have been moved by the image of a single wounded Lebanese child. As of last week, more than 12,300 Palestinian children had been killed in Gaza and tens of thousands maimed and injured just for months. What can you do? Let me tell you. Joe Biden lost his children. The 
car accidents and cancer. He ought to have more sympathy for children in distress, for children taken away from their parents. Tragedy. He ought not to be arming their murderers, but he is. I think, deep down, I think he's not an evil man. It's just a guess. Clearly, I don't know. Just a suspicion. I think he's surrounded by people that chatter at him and, and maybe even mean their best. But they all have their own masters. Because that is the system of government we have. Not like out here. We have people who are indebted to APAC. We have people with Russian compromat. We have uh, people with Israeli compromat. We have, uh, we have people who simply are so callous that they want to be the next Kissinger and think blood is the sacrifice that's necessary to get them there. I think he's surrounded by those people, and I think he needs to see pictures of the children he's killed. Send them to him. When you come across social media where there are pictures of uh, Israeli snipers gunning down uh, a, a woman crossing the street with shopping bags, an image I'll personally never be able to forget, uh, when you see a child uh, breathing in a makeshift hospital bed with a tube up one nostril and a little trickle of blood leaking out of the other nostril every time she takes a ragged breath, tag Joe Biden. Tag the White House. Incidentally, I sent, uh, or I, I included uh, in the description, the actual address of the White House. It's a famous one, 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, but I have all the rest of the nonsense in there as well. Send him an actual picture of what he's done. The civilians that he has allowed to die. That he has given the, the, the means of killing to their murderers. Send, send, him, send him those pictures. That's what I suggest you can do about this, because Reagan demonstrated, and it apparently can be stopped with a phone call. I'll acknowledge uh, uh, Netanyahu is a different animal, and he is an animal. No, that's not true. Animals have souls. But Netanyahu uh, is not the same as the man Reagan was talking to. But nonetheless, we can, we can with an executive order, halt the Iron Dome uh, resupplies. That could be done immediately. Biden alone could make the decision to uh, uh, allow the UN resolutions on a ceasefire to go through. Biden, personally, Joe Biden, no one else, don't make excuses for him, Joe Biden would do those things, and he has chosen not to. Make him deal with the reality he's creating. Send him those pictures. That mail him a picture of a dead child he's responsible for. Or a dying child or a maimed child. Tag him on all social media where you come across those. Tag the White House account. Make them have to deal with the reality. Make this something that at the very least they have to acknowledge.